Hi, I'm Dennis Pegden, CEO of Simeo, and I'd like to welcome you to this tutorial on running experiments using a simple two-server flow line model that we built in the first tutorial. If you've not already watched the first tutorial, I encourage you to do so before watching this one. The model we built in the first uh, tutorial was a simple two-server flow line. So we have entities arrive here, go to the first server, get processed one at a time, wait in this buffer space if necessary. Then once they're processed here, they go to the second server, again processed one at a time with this buffer space for wait any waiting entities. Once the job completes, server two then departs the system. So let's look at the model that we built in Simeo. Uh, we built this model with a source, a path to a server one, then server two, and then the sink. And we could use this model to run different kinds of experimentation. So for example, if we click on server one, we could change the capacity of the server, the reliability, the processing time, and so forth, and then run this model interactively to see, see the impact. What we're going to do in this tutorial, though, is to, to conduct uh, experiments with this model by setting up what's called an exper experiment. And we'll, first of all, we'll click on server one, select input buffer capacity, right-click on input buffer, and we'll create a new reference property, which we're going to name input buffer capacity one. Now, what we've done here is create an input buffer property that will pass the value for the input buffer down from the model uh, into the server one. Then we'll do the same thing for server two. So we'll create a new property on the model by right-clicking on input buffer and say create new reference property. And so this is a model on the property that's being referenced by the input buffer at server two. Now, after setting up these two properties, we're going to go to the project, and we're going to define what's called a new experiment. An experiment is just a way of defining a set of scenarios that will be run automatically for you. So I'm going to click here on new experiment, and it takes us to the this window that shows a, a table that's got input buffer one, input capacity one, input buffer capacity two as columns on here. So let's assume that we have room for four buffer spaces. And we could allocate those any way we wanted between the, the two servers. So for example, we might put two in front of the first server, two in front of the second server, one in front of the first server, and then three in front of the second server. And then we could reverse that to three and one. And what we'd like to do is to run a set of experiments to analyze each of these three scenarios. So to run those experiments, all we do is we come up here to our ribbon here, and we click on Run. And when we do that, you notice that the first two lines in our, our experiment table are yellow, both saying running. And if we look, the number completed are changing more or less at the same time. The reason for that is I'm running these on a notebook computer that has a dual core processor. And so Simeo is, looks at that and says, well, I'm going to run a replication on every processor that I have available. So it runs two at a time, so twice as fast as it normally would. If you had a quad core processor, it would, it would run those four at a time, so four times as fast as normal. Now we've, we see all the runs are completed this time, so we've made five replications of each of the scenarios. And what we'd like to do now is look at the results. Now, the results in Simio are displayed in two different ways. The first way is a pivot table, and this is really designed for the analyst. And if you're familiar with uh, Microsoft Excel and uh, using pivot tables in Excel, then this should be familiar to you. But the basic idea here is that we can analyze the data from different perspectives. We can sort it and so forth. So for example, if we were interested in looking at this data from the primary standpoint of the data item first, we can just drag this column over here the data is going to rearrange accordingly. So this really is intended to let the analyst data mine the results by viewing it in different ways. The other way of looking at the results is a more traditional report. And there are several different reports you can select from. This particular one is the scenario comparison report. And what it does is show for each of the statistics of interest uh, the results for each of the three scenarios we define. So to review what we've just done, we started off with a model with a source server sync that we built in the first tutorial. Then we defined an experiment for that, and the experiment that we defined set 
three different scenarios up. And then we ran those and then looked at the results in the form of a pivot table and a traditional report. If you uh, like more information on Simio, we, we encourage you to continue with the tutorials. Uh, also, give us a call if you'd like to talk to us about how Simio could be applied to your application or if you'd like a personalized online demo of Simio. Thank you very much.